just when it looked as if there might be some hope of cleaning up the nation's financial markets sullied by conflicts of interest and fraudulent investment advice at major banks and brokerage houses, along comes evidence that another segment of the securities business has been rigged in favor of the big investors at the expense of the little guy. This time, the villains are mutual funds, usually deemed a safe haven for unsophisticated investors. In his latest investigation of tawdry practices in the financial markets, Elliot Spitzer, the New York State Attorney General, revealed this week that some mutual funds had been making secret illegal deals that benefited big in and out traders at the expense of legions of long term investors. The practice, he said, is almost certainly widespread. As the first step in what he expects will become a broad investigation, Mr. Spitzer announces that this week that Edward Stern and his hedge fund, Canary Capital Partners, had agreed to pay $40 million in fines and restitution to settle a case in which they admitted no wrongdoing. Mr. Spitz's 44-page complaint charges that the firm made secret deals with mutual funds to engage in two kinds of illegal or improper trading. One allowed the hedge fund to buy mutual fund shares at the daily 4 p.m. closing price, even after the market had closed. The practice is forbidden by state law and federal regulations. The other technique involves quick trades that take advantage of inefficiencies in setting an accurate mutual fund price. These are not necessarily illegal, but are prohibited or discouraged by many mutual funds. The mutual funds, including some managed by the Bank of America, apparently granted these special privileges in exchange for commissions, fees, and real or promised investments by Canary. The improper trading diluted the value of mutual fund shares but spread over hordes of investors. The damage suffered by any individual was probably small. Even so, the revelation that mutual funds have engaged in manipulative practices will be more shocking to most investors than any shenanigans by a hedge fund. Mr. Spitzer will need to pursue the mutual funds with special vigor. The Attorney General's latest foray into the financial markets makes one wonder whether regulators of the Securities and Exchange Commission and the financial industry's internal watchdogs have once again been caught napping. The SEC Chairman William Donaldson called the conduct that was described reprehensible and his agency scrambled to mount its own investigation. Still, investors can be grateful that the Attorney General is once again propelling the inquiries. Efforts by some key figures in Congress to freeze the states out of financial market investigations seem incredibly misguided. The Bush administration's announcement that it is giving up on Miguel Estrada, whose appeals court nomination has been repeatedly blocked by a Senate filibuster is welcome news. The White House's drive to have Mr. Estrada confirmed while keeping key parts of his record secret showed contempt for the Senate's role and for the American public's right to know. The Senate has made clear its resolve to prevent the White House from packing the federal courts with unworthy judges. President Bush should start not renominating judges who can command support by both sides of the aisle. Mr. Estrada is a talented Harvard Law School graduate with a distinguished legal career, but he is reported to hold views that place him far outside the legal mainstream. At his conf confirmation hearing for a seat on the powerful United States Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit, he repeatedly refused to answer Senator's questions. Incredibly, he claimed to have no opinion on whether Roe v. Wade, which legalized abortion, was correctly decided. As a lawyer in the Solicitor General's office, Mr. Estrada wrote memos that may well shed light on 
his views, but the White House uh, refused senators' requests to see them. If um, it claimed that the disclosure would be unprecedented, even though when Robert Bork was nominated to the Supreme Court in 1987, the Senate examined memos he had written as Solicitor General. The Constitution says judges are to be appointed with the Senate's advice and consent, but the Bush administration has played a cat and mouse game trying to rush nominees through and demonizing senators who ask legitimate questions. This is an abuse of the system the founders established. As Charles Schumer has noted, no American expects to be hired for a job after refusing to answer questions at the interview. The Constitution requires not only the Senate's consent, but also its advice, and it is on this score that the Bush administration has been most recalcitrant. Too hard. Recalcitrant? Recalcitrant. Recalcitrant.